Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, dear students, I am your chemistry teacher here. Today we are uh, discussing about the branches of chemistry which is present on uh, page number 4 and page number 5. As you know that science is a very vast field. For that purpose it is divided into the different branches. Chemistry is also the branch of science but it is also a very vast field. For that purpose it is also divided into the different 8 branches to cover all the areas of chemistry. Out of these 8 branches, the 3 are the basic branches of chemistry which is physical chemistry, organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry. Now I am discussing first about the physical chemistry. So what is physical chemistry? So the definition shows that it is concerned with the relationship between the physical properties of substances along with the chemical changes in them. So the definition of physical chemistry shows the two main things which are uh, of discussion that is physical properties of a substance and the second one is the chemical changes. <clears throat> what is physical properties? It is actually the qualities of a substance which we can see with the naked eye like state of substance whether it is in solid state liquid state or gaseous state what is its color what is its taste its melting point its boiling point etc these all are the physical properties of a substances what is the chemical change or we can say that how the chemical change occurs when the old bonds are broken within the compound and the new bonds are formed that is actually the chemical change now through a very simple example we can easily distinguish between the physical change and the chemical change. So the first one is ice. When we take ice, we know that it is water, but it is present in the solid state. But when it is melted, the ice changes into the liquid state. And when it is boiled, it is converted into the gaseous state. But here, the water is present in all the three states of matter in the form of H2O. So the here is present only, here involves only the physical change because here only the state of matter changes but not the uh, bonds are damaged. So that is the physical change. But the second example shows the water when up to 2000 degrees Celsius it is heated, it is converted into the hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So the first one we see that here the physical change also occurs because firstly in reactants water is present in the liquid state while in the product it is present in the gaseous states. So here it is the physical change because the uh, state changes. But here also involves the chemical change. How? Because the water, the structure of water is broken down and it is converted into a new thing that is uh, hydrogen hydrogen bond which forms the hydrogen gas and the oxygen oxygen bond which forms the oxygen gas. So this is all about the physical chemistry. Now I can give you a little bit summary of the physical chemistry that it is concerned with the physical properties of a substances along with the chemical changes in them. Then we discuss that physical properties, what are physical properties, that is the qualities of substance. What is chemical change when the old bonds are broken and the new bonds are formed. How they interlink with each other, we can take it from a very simple example of water. That when water is uh, heated up to 2000 degrees Celsius, it is converted into the hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So here the physical change occurs as well as the chemical change also occurs. After the uh, explanation of the physical chemistry, now we have to uh, discuss about the organic chemistry. Now what is organic chemistry? It is the study of those compounds which contains carbon and hydrogen called hydrocarbons and their derivatives. So as the definition shows that organic chemistry is the study of carbon and hydrogen which is collectively called as hydrocarbons and their derivatives. Now what is hydrocarbon? Those compounds which contains carbon and hydrogen that are called as the organic compounds. So before I have to discuss the derivatives, first I have to discuss the some examples of hydrocarbons. The first one example is that of methane. Methane is the natural gas which we can use in our houses. Its composition is that of carbon and hydrogen means that hydrocarbons. It contains one atom of carbon and four atoms of hydrogen. It means that it is the organic compound. The second one example is that of the acetylene. Acetylene is used for the welding purposes. Its composition is that of is also of that of uh, hydrocarbons. Means it contains two atoms of carbon and two atoms of hydrogen. So it is also the hydrocarbon means it is the organic compound. Third one is that is the sugar. 
or sucrose which we can use in our houses its composition is also that of the carbon and hydrogen and it also contains a little bit amount of oxygen it contains 12 atoms of carbon 22 atoms of hydrogen and 11 atoms of oxygen same as we can see the formula of glucose which contains 6 atoms of carbon 12 atoms of hydrogen and 6 atoms of oxygen but the question arises that why we call these two as organic compounds because they contain also oxygen atoms so the answer is that that we called it organic compound because here the ratio of hydrocarbon is more than that of the oxygen and same is the reason for the glucose here also the ratio of carbon and hydrogen collectively is more than that of the oxygen so for that purpose we can say that they are the organic compounds while when we can see the carbon dioxide carbon monoxide carbonates these are not the organic compounds why because they contain carbon but not hydrogen so this is not the organic compound same is the reason for carbon monoxide the hydrogen is not present the same is the reason for the carbonates hydrogen is not present there but here we can see in bicarbonates in HCO3 here is present hydrogen carbon and oxygen but here the ratio of oxygen is more than that of hydrogen and carbon for that purpose we can say that it is not the organic compound cyanide it also contains does not contain hydrogen for that purpose we can say that these compounds are not the organic compounds these are the inorganic compounds now switch towards the derivatives what are the derivatives what does it mean then the compounds that can be imagined to arise from a parent compound I have separate I have divide this um, definition into two parts compound that can be imagined to arise of a parent compound that is the first part so I have to uh, explain it with a very simple example of methane methane in methane we can see that the carbon is connected with the four hydrogen atoms so that one methane is the parent compound now the second part by replacement of one atom with another atom or group of atoms now we can see that in the parent compound means in methane this hydrogen is replaced by the group of atoms that is oxygen and hydrogen which is collectively called as hydroxyl group it can take the position of hydrogen here so it makes a totally different compound that is the methanol its properties is totally different from that of the methane so uh, this methanol is the derivative of methane because it is derived from the uh, compound of methane the second example we can also see from the uh, parent compound methane that these three hydrogens of methane are replaced by the chlorine atom by three chlorine atoms it forms a totally different compound that is the chloroform CHCl3 which is used for the anesthetic purposes so this is also the derivative of methane clear now uh, this is all the uh, about the organic chemistry but at the last I have to discuss about its origin that the origin of all organic compounds are living things means all the organic compounds are derived means their its source is the living things for example I can take a very simple example that is of petroleum what is petroleum it is the mixture of hydrocarbons and from where it originates it originates from the fossils means from the dead remains of plants and animals this is all about the organic chemistry now I have to give a very short summary of organic chemistry that what we can discuss in the organic chemistry that organic chemistry is the study of hydrocarbons and their derivatives hydrocarbons means which contain carbon and hydrogen and that are called as the organic compounds then we can see about the we can uh, give some examples that is of methane acetylene sugar and glucose and we can say that uh, here oxygen is present but we can say it uh, organic compound because the ratio of carbon and hydrogen is more than that of the oxygen then we can discuss about the derivatives that what are derivatives 
the, the derivatives are those compounds which can be originate from the parent hydrocarbon atoms so that are its derivatives this is all are studied in the branch of organic chemistry and at the last we discussed that the origin of organic compounds are living things and simple we can take the example of a petroleum the third one branch that is the inorganic chemistry so first we can uh, see its definition that it deals with the study of all the elements and compounds except hydrocarbons organic compounds and their derivatives the definition shows that it is the study of all elements and compounds except hydrocarbons means here we can study all that elements and compounds which do not contain carbon and hydrogen there are very simple examples of uh, inorganic compounds are nacl it do not contains means the sodium chloride the common salt it do not contains the carbon and nor hydrogen and the second one is the water h2o it also do not contain carbon hydrogen is present but carbon is not present there the third one is the sodium bicarbonate nahco3 which is the common baking soda which we can use in our houses here is present hydrogen and carbon but the ratio of oxygen is more than that of the hydrogen and carbon for that purpose it is the inorganic compound the next one is that is the carbon nitride which contain 3 atoms of carbon and 4 atoms of nitrogen here also hydrogen is not present the next one is that is the calcium carbonate which is the limestone or we can simply say marble its composition is that it is made up of one atom of calcium one atom of carbon and three atoms of oxygen here also uh, hydrogen is not present etc these all are the examples of um, an organic chemistry now switch towards its origin so the origin of all the inorganic compounds are non living things examples are simple like nacl sodium chloride means the common salt we can take it simply from the rocks and the sea water which are the non living things the next one like we can say about the magnesium chloride its origin is also of the sea water so uh, there are the few examples of origin now the fourth one branch of uh, chemistry is the analytical chemistry so we can uh, see its definition that it deals with the study of qualitative and quantitative analysis of matter so uh, the name indicates that analytical word is derived from the word analysis which means detailed examination of anything so what type of analysis we can study in analytical chemistry the first one is the qualitative analysis and the second one is the quantitative analysis so what is the qualitative analysis that what type or kind of atoms or molecules are present in matter and what is quantitative analysis that how much mass and number of these atoms or molecules are present in matter so i can explain the qualitative and quantitative analysis through a very simple example that is of water and carbon dioxide first we have to discuss the water that water is made up of hydrogen and oxygen so that is the type of elements which are present in water so that is the qualitative analysis the second one that how many number of these atoms are present so we can see that two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen is present in water so it means that it is the quantitative analysis because it shows the number of atoms present in a molecule or a compound the next one example is that of the carbon dioxide here we see that carbon that carbon dioxide is made up of carbon and oxygen so it means that which type of element is present carbon dioxide carbon and oxygen so that is also the qualitative analysis while we we can see that in carbon dioxide one atom of carbon and two atoms of oxygen are present which make the co2 so that is the quantitative analysis because it shows the number of atoms 
so in analytical chemistry we can also discuss the instrumentation identification separation and quantification of matter they all are studied in this branch like for example instrumentation means that what type of instruments are used for different purposes like here is the example like sphygmomanometer is used to measure the blood pressure so that is the analytical chemistry that is can be we can study it in analytical chemistry same next one is the determination of masses means it is the identification this type of uh, uh, examples we can study in analytical chemistry i can give you a brief summary of analytical chemistry that we can study that analytical word is derived from the word analysis which means the detailed examination of anything and here we can study the analysis of quality and quantity means the qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis as qualitative analysis means that what type or kind of atoms or molecules are present in matter and quantitative means how much mass and number of these atoms or molecules are present in matter so then we can explain it through a very simple example of water and carbon dioxide which is made up of hydrogen and oxygen and the carbon dioxide is made up of carbon and oxygen so they both are the uh, type of elements present in a molecule so th this is the qualitative analysis while we can see in uh, water that two atoms of hydrogen and one uh, one atom of oxygen make it as two so this is its quality because it shows its ratio and same in the carbon dioxide one atom of carbon and two atoms of uh, oxygen make co2 so this is also the quantitative analysis then we can say that in analytical chemistry we can uh, also study about the instrumentation identification separation and quantification of matter i can give a very simple example of that that is a sphygmomanometer which is used to measure the blood pressure and determination of masses etc they all are studied in analytical chemistry